Peace, Chiefs and Deers. It's Bronzebird here with another video. Before I begin, like and subscribe. Thank you. So something was on my mind. Something told me to do this video as a man. And that <laughs> before I started off, I really wanted to call this particular movement a bitch movement, but then I had to a little strike back a little bit to hear certain videos that I'm going to be playing during this duration of this broadcast in which I have to take back certain things that I'm thinking about in order to be more open-minded into the discussion of which I'm going to talk about now, which is about this whole theory about the male body positivity movement. Now, there's probably a video that I did do on the body positivity movement, which had to deal with females, feminine women, or whatever you want to call it, women, where me and another guy agreed on the idea that it's more of a celebration to uplift fat or obese women, in which I believe they should not be honored for mere just existence. They should be honored for taking care of themselves, which would require for them to take more health measures or to lose weight. Now, the thing about it with the male body positivity movement, they put in a lot of factions in it. Well, they would think that their dream guy should be six feet tall, should be able to have muscle, or he should be stocky and this, that, and the third to appear as attractive by societal standards. Now, my thing about it is this. Sometimes I feel like the whole entire positivity movement on the male side, or just the idea that a man can't find attraction the way that he wants to, comes from the idea of female validation, in which I believe women are usually projecting themselves into the idea that they don't want to deal with a man of certain things because of his height or his body type or this, that, and the third. Most of the times I do feel like women talk a lot of bullshit and that they will deal with a man who is not six feet. They will deal with a man that is not necessarily bulky and works out at the gym, or maybe he's a fat man, or maybe he's just a man who's skinny. See, the conversation about body acceptance is less sensitive on men than it is for women. Because when it comes to men, different factors are associated with men to be attractive, his resources, what was it that he can provide? What is it that he can do? This is a common conversation. So it surprises me that they're going to have this conversation about it. And I'm going to play a couple of videos in order to stretch out my points or give an analysis or what I think about the topic of conversation. So I'm going to show you something real quick before I begin. So you see right here on your screen, Google images right here, and it says a lot about these male body positivity and this, that, and third. See how they incorporated women into this? You see women that's incorporated into this and male positivity, body positivity for men. Now, look at the right of your screen. Now, I, I assume this is from Twitter, but this is, this is what it says, wisdom goals. It says, boys, your bodies are perfect. You don't have to be six foot two ripped and have a six pack to be handsome. It's okay to have a tummy or be skinny with no muscle. It's okay to be short and have acne, stretch marks, and cellulite. Y'all are handsome in your own way. And this is a funny thing about the body positivity movement because a lot of these talking points usually come under two factions that I usually see. And they're usually associated with this because I guess they are supposed to be the rebellious members of society to go against societal norms. And that is the LGBTQ community and the feminism community. So it's hard for me to have this conversation because I'm led to believe that these two parties in general are trying to find a way to basically effeminize the man and use factions of trying to say it's okay to be who you are, which exactly is a good point, but there is always something that comes behind it. It's just like when they offer you something, but then there's a trick behind it. There's something that comes behind that trick. You understand what I'm saying? That's exactly what I feel that they try to do with these type of conversations of regulating it towards men. Because they're supposed to be about women and women are based on the way that they look. Men are not really based on the way that they look. An ugly man that at least has six figures can find a woman that's a supermodel. 
or is in his 50s, which is a video I touched on before. So a lot of the stuff that goes on to the topic conversation with men, it's hard for me to put down and say it's okay. My theory is any man can find a woman of his choice. I wouldn't give a damn if you're five foot two, if you have acne all over your face and you're just a short dweeb. I wouldn't care. I wouldn't care if you're six foot two and you are muscular, you have all the attributes that would make you an attractive man, but you might be broke or you might not be in the same predicament or position as anybody else in the society. Men need to have an understanding at the end of the day, you have the power to do exactly what you need to do and have the power to attract any woman that you want. I tell men that you shouldn't focus on nines and tens. You should focus on women that is of your caliber. If you leave the rating system out of it, because sometimes men overlook women who are actually attractive, but they don't have to be the hottest bitches for lack of a better term in order for you to feel as if like you need to get with her or either pump and dump or have an LTR. So that's just my opinion on it. We're gonna play a couple of videos to give my uh, synopsis or give my views on different points that's mentioned in this video. So peep. I'm tired. I'm tired of hearing. To be a man, you gotta have a huge dick. Six pack abs. You gotta be tall. If you lack that, you are less of a man. Fair use. I'm tired. I'm tired. I'm tired. I'm tired of hearing people analyze, criticize, appraise, or hate on my body. I'm tired of hearing, be a man. You're too skinny to be a man. Come on, man. Why don't you eat a sandwich or something? Real men have facial hair. Do you lift, bro? Th I, this is this is just what I would have been dealt with. This is what I have. I think people forget that we're all built differently. My body is not muscular. My body's not flawless. My body's not here for your pity. This is just the way that. And I'm sorry, man, like, this is the point. Number one, this is from BuzzFeed. BuzzFeed is largely a liberalism-consumed network, okay? And the problem is, is that with BuzzFeed, BuzzFeed try to make these men look like bitches. I'm sorry, I have to really say it because this is really what they try to do. BuzzFeed tries to incorporate all these conversations and trying to get men to understand that they're victims and all these different things. Let me tell you this. Yes, men are criticized for many different things. Men are criticized for their weight. Men are criticized for their height. Men are criticized for a lot of different things. But how men interact with each other is way different than how women interact with each other. Men can have conversations about their insecurities, absolutely. But it's not the same as the way that women do. In my opinion, when men get around each other, that's when we have a conversation with each other about our insecurities and things that we feel inside. Because I, I understand this as a man. But we don't go on national television or go on networks such as BuzzFeed to have these type of conversations. Not, not, absolutely not. And then, and then what you hear what that man just said, my body is not for your, your pity. You know what I'm saying? These are not talking points men usually say. I mean, maybe men don't have the same type of mindset that I do because I just don't give a damn what people think about me at the end of the day. That's just certified conversations. And a lot of men that I stay around, they don't give a damn either. As long as they're doing exactly what they need to do, they already, they already know at the end of the day, that when they put in work and they work on themselves, they are able to attract any woman or to be able to be satisfied with their position in this society. So it's really weird to me to hear certain men such as this one say the things that he just said, because it just sounds just like how feminist women talk. That's exactly what it sounds like. That my physique is, I can't do anything to change it. If we all look the same, I think that'd be really boring. My body, my body. My, he's, I agree with that. My body is a gift. My body is cool. My body is the shit. My body is skinny, but I love it. It may not be perfect, but that's okay. My body's mine. My body is mine. My body is mine. And you see that right there? Two women tired of hearing about bodies, women. That's probably how it started off. You know, BuzzFeed tries to play where they want to include both genders. But like I said before, my belief is, is that they try to effeminize these men and talk about their feelings and all these different things out there so they could be suitable. Now, this is the thing. Now, understanding how Bronzebird works, I am one that advocates for men's mental health. I do. I do advocate for men to be able to be expressive and express themselves 
and learn from their lessons, especially myself if I ever said anything or did anything that I didn't like in the past. My thing about it is this, there is certain conversation that should just stick around men, not to even be in the audience or be in the same room as women, especially if it's women that are akin to movements like feminism and LGBTQ, because it's a whole entire rabbit hole to make the men subservient to the woman's whimsical nature. That's my opinion. That's just my opinion at the end of the day. Now this video right here is something that really spoke to me in a way where it seemed as if it kind of triggered me because <laughs> for lack of a better term, you have someone who appears to be a trans man having this conversation about male body positivity. Now my thing about it is this, trans men cannot have the same conversation as biological men when it comes to being a biological male or male -ness. And the thing about it is gay men will have the conversations with trans men because they akin to them. They're a community, they're part of the LGBTQ. And I don't have anything against uh, a gay people. Your life is your life. Your journey is your journey. It just feels very uncomfortable when trans men feel as if they can have a conversation about biological maleness or maleness just because they decided that they wanted to go with this type of lifestyle and choice. That's not my fault. That's you decided that, not me. So it's really weird. And the person to your left would be identified as a trans man. And the person to your right would probably be identified as a queer man. So let's just watch this video and see exactly what they're going to say and the whole charades and tirades that they're going to make about this whole entire issue about male body positivity. Watch. Though the body positivity movement has been gaining massive traction for women, male body insecurities remain largely undiscussed. For Generation Z, attitudes are shifting, and they're creating a fresh perspective on boyhood in which authenticity, inclusivity, and body positivity are celebrated. Now, which again, what y'all should understand is that when they talk about redefining what boyhood is, is to incorporate uh, trans men such as this one on your screen, and also trying to tell men to get in touch with their feelings. All of it is a smoke screen. If y'all don't understand exactly what's going on in y'all goddamn society, I'm telling you that for a reason. But I just want y'all to understand when they're trying to tell you redefine what boyhood is, even if they're bringing in Generation Z to be the Trojan horse of this conversation, it is a smokescreen to men for men to be subservient into the woman's societal pressure of trying to be accepted. And also the society's pitch of what they want the new society to be. And mainly what it is a smoke screen of is men getting more feminine, feminine, which is why I use the point of saying effeminize so much. Well, there's a growing need for open conversations on male body image anxiety. To learn how brands can better appeal to the young, big and tall community, WGSN spoke to photographer Tariq Carroll, model Marquise Neal, and Jay Hassan, communications officer at Boohoo Man. The Every Man Project is a body positivity project that is encouraging diversity in the fashion industry in terms of showcasing. And I mean, come on, like, look, sorry that it has to be on the screen for a second, but when you look at this, this person right here, let me go back just a little bit. When you look at this person right here, Tyreek Carroll, you, the, the way that this person is speaking, and the way that this person looks still looks like a female. Just the fact of the matter that they have uh, the chin beard, okay? They, they, have the, they have the facial hair on the right and the left, and there's no hair on the bottom. Now, I have an understanding men grow, grow beards differently. The way that my beard is fixated, I have the whole entire thing, including the chin, including the mustache, and including the sideburns. And I believe that's, that beard... Um, that type of beard is called uh, the side chop or something like that. I forgot. But anyway, the point is, is that these are the things that I usually talk about. How they have people like this that are trans men 
trying to have a conversation about biological men and trying to be incorporated into what maleness is. My thing is, I don't feel sorry for these people having a conversation. You shouldn't be allowed to have this conversation as biological men. You should be having this conversation of being a trans man, having the understanding you are not like biological men. Damn it. Fashion industry in terms of showcasing men of different skin tones, different body types, different body sizes, men from different backgrounds. I feel there's been a lack of that for men. And the best thing I can do is use my voice as a fashion photographer to hopefully cause a shift in consciousness. What voice? You, you, like, this is a woman's voice. And I'm not doing this to make a mockery. I mean, like I said before in many videos, you should be able to live the way you live, right? Whatever you choose to do, you have to take that up with the most high. That's not up to me. But I should be allowed to critique my opinion on people like this. You understand what I'm saying? To having this conversation about maleness because it becomes very uncomfortable. You should not be able to participate in certain conversations because you don't live the same life as I do as a biological man. No, absolutely not. I see that there's a huge need in growth for plus size male models because we are essentially a huge category of not just the modeling world, but in general, in the population in the US, in the world, the plus size people exist. They're the largest demographic around. Standard sizing was just something that I think people wanted to idolize and, and have a fantasy of. And so having plus size male models and having that need is in incredibly crucial because we are somebody who has always been around. Being a plus size male myself, having my own uh, struggles with body image issues. What I found is a lot of men have the same issues and we've been trained and taught to not really speak about it. It's kind of like an unspoken spoken. I'm saying that the whole and what really bugs me about it is, is that if you ask a good majority of men, they don't give a shit about uh, image and all these different things about how they consult themselves online. That's just my opinion. Like, it, I've known plenty of uh, big and tall men that's six foot two, six foot one, could be five foot ten or five foot nine, whatever. Uh, the standard in height, I believe, in the U.S. is five foot nine anyway. But just the idea of having this conversation when it comes to it is the fact of the matter that men who are big and tall that I've grown to know and understand, they don't give a shit about no goddamn image. Yeah, they was teased in school for being fat. They was teased in school for being big and this, that, and the third. For a certain amount of these men, take care of themselves, make sure that they're okay, make sure that they're good and they don't have to worry about being consumed by the large consumption of what the society thinks about them. So it's really weird when certain people decide to make this a topic of conversation when big and tall men really don't care. I mean, you have people like Shaq O'Neal, who's big and tall. Do you see him complaining about, uh, about height and weight issues? Absolutely not. And you have certain men like, what is it, the, the comedian Earthquake? Earthquake was one of them. And it was a couple of other men that really did not give a damn about what society thought. Now they knew inherently that they had to lose the weight, but at the same time, they, they would joke and laugh about themselves being fat. You know what I'm saying? This is why I say this is a conversation for women. This is not a conversation for men. It's really weird for me having this conversation because men, now what that happens is when it's under those under umbrellas of liberalism, which contains the two parties that I talked about before, now it starts to be these whole entire conversations like men, you are welcome here, but you're only welcome here because we allow our ideologies to feed into your ideologies, which becomes a confusion between the two parties, especially biological men. The idea of male positivity and body image has really progressed this year. I do think it's definitely helped with the amount of women's where influencers and bloggers and celebrities that have really embraced their body. Bingo! And I wanted you to hear that. Hear what he said when he sat there and mentioned women in his whole entire conversation just now. Continue. And how they look and have really sort of stood strong with that. So I think this year as such menswear and sort of young men have really started to be confident in themselves. So with that, I think 2018 will be a massive year for, for body confidence and for, for brands to really embrace the, the big and tall sector because it's, it's there, it's a, it's a customer and 
we all need to make sure that we're inclusive and reaching out to them. I firmly believe that in this industry, everyone should see themselves represented in media, in fashion, TV. I think brands need to understand that giving a voice to a marginalized person, especially within your brand, especially within your audience. And before, before he continues, I just want y'all to pay attention to the words that's commonly used by these liberals, by these, uh, uh, these people that put in all these different words out there to give into this whole idea about community and acceptance. Watch out for words like marginalize, intersectionality, and, and words just like that. Watch out for words just like that, because if you ever hear words like that when you're in a men's circle or you're in any other circle that has to deal with the progression of men and they use stuff like that, it is a red flag for them to sit up there and bring out ideologies that is not for men. It is for the community of the two other parties that I mentioned before. It is a great way to fully impact your business, but as well as fully impact the culture of what you represent. And it's definitely a customer that's there that we wanted to be able to appeal to and reach out to. So we launched our Big and Tall collection at the end of August 2017. I think because BoohooMan.com is a year old, we're really testing out the market. We've launched a um, product category for boys, for, for like pride collection, tailoring. So it was just a natural progression for us really to move into Big and Tall, which is what we've done I'm really happy about. Being transparent to me has always been the biggest thing. And I think what brands could do to educate their audience is be transparent and let them know, hey, we have something that's for you and we have accessibility. Transparent is another word. And we have options for you in an area where there are no options. We really have to like make more cracks and make more moves. And I think that will happen in time, but there is a start, you know, you, you can, type in, you know, hashtag, you know, male body positivity, and you're seeing more things, but there's still a lot more work to do. According to a 2016 report by Mintel, 17% of shoppers want better availability of clothing in larger sizes. Heading into 2018, brands should create products that appeal to young men of all body types, along with inclusive marketing campaigns. Look to leading brands like ASOS and Boohoo Man for inspiration, and tap the authentic voices of body positive influencers and consumers. Product collaborations and guidance from these people will be key for discovering what will work and what will not. And what's really crazy is when you look to the right of your screen, like I mentioned earlier, all of that is confusion. All of that is confusion. And, and, and they'll use trigger words and a lot of words to make it seem as if they're there for you. No, it's for them to put in their ideology so that you soak it up and that you start to believe them. And this is my whole entire thing about being a man. A man reacts differently than women when it comes to certain issues. Do I ever say that men have insecurities? Yes, they do. We do have insecurities because we're all human, of course. But at the same time, the way that it's tackled is not the same way that women tackle these issues. It's not the same. It's really not the same. And I wish that people would understand that. So this is the last video that I'm going to play right here. And I really wanted to make this video to be known because I do understand a lot of the talking points that these men have made in this video, but I would like to give my commentary on it as well. So peep. self-esteem and body issues. At least when I hear that as a topic, my first thought goes like, oh, that's a normally a conversation for women, but at least for me, I, I definitely have a, a lot of those issues, but, you know. And, and let me say this for reference. I have no problem with men like this meeting up and having conversations about, you know, male image or, uh, you know, a feeling of it. I just disagree that, and, and maybe this is just me as a man. I'm not used to seeing men being broadcasted about their issues in this type of setting to talk about individual things like this. Now, again, I'll tell y'all, 
like I'll tell everybody, I am a male's mental health advocate. I advocate for men to express themselves. I just understand that when it comes to certain corporations, they usually use men in this conversation for them to be equal to women to have conversations about things like body positivity and self-image and issues. That's my whole entire point that I'm trying to make. Again, I'm not against men like this being in a circle having conversations about things like this because it's very important. And I have, I have an understanding that men have insecurities when it comes to a lot of different things and they should be able to express it. So don't take what I'm saying to be a contradiction or me being hypocritical when I'm making these statements and points. Just understand where I'm coming from. I'm not the tallest guy. I'm not like long and lean and, and ripped in this kind of way. And how much of a man am I or can I be? Could you when, be with the, like, yeah. I mean, that just like hit a chord with me because the thing. And, and before this guy continues, I absolutely understand what he's saying 100%. Heightism, I guess, if you understand it in, a, in the whole entire thing, is a thing when it comes to men, okay? Women do want to sit up there and project and act as if they should date a man that's only six feet. When they're saying already in statistics, allegedly, that when it comes to six feet or taller men, they are not as common as they think. It's not common as much as they think. If they're saying the average man in America is five foot nine. Now, my thing about it is to the whole entire heightens and things for brothers or men that might be short, please do not think for a second that women will not date you because you might be five foot two to five foot seven, okay? They will date you. And especially if you're an attractive man that keeps himself good, clean, and you wear wholesome clothes and you about your business, women are going to approach you. I know plenty of men that might be five foot one, five foot two, uh, five foot three to five foot eight, and they can attract any type of woman they want. Do not believe the bullshit that women are say, say to you and project. Now, there are certain women that say they do not, they absolutely stand on their word and they say they do not want to date short men. And I have an understanding on why they don't want to date short men. I get it. And I respect that. But at the same time, a common woman, common women, <laughs> common women make it seem as if they care for height. They, they don't. Okay, they use it in topic of conversation, but best believe if you're a good looking guy, then you're a handsome guy and you're below five foot, let's just say five foot seven or five foot eight, you can still get a woman that's attractive and hot as hell and still have her be attracted to you. So don't believe the hype, fellas. I just know it for sure. And an example of this is Prince. Prince back in the 1980s. First of all, the dude was androgynous and he still was able to get all the women he wanted at five foot two. Don't believe this, fellas. Don't believe it. The thing that I've always heard was to be like a good looking guy is tall, dark, and handsome. And I'm like, well, I only have two out of three. So, <laughs> you know, like, what am I going to do? But it asked that question, like, how much, how desirable could I possibly be? I obviously don't fit that mold. Um, and I never have. I see pictures of like male model and instagram like i could be doing better sometimes i feel like oh my god i feel so good and then sometimes i feel like i don't even want to come out from under the covers now my thing about it is when it comes to image i i always touch on this in in my real life that i don't believe that men should be staring at men on instagram what i believe is that a lot of dudes on instagram that do instagram modeling are zesty as fuck and my thing about it is is that certain men that are on instagram want to do thought, uh, thought pictures, like show themselves with their six packs and wearing Speedos or wearing briefs. I mean, Speedos, I believe I call it male panties, but that's just my opinion on things. But my thing about it is men can be sexy, absolutely. Men can share parts of their body that is attractive to the woman's gaze, but I'm the type of person that doesn't believe in showing all my goods on Instagram. I would want my woman to see that. I'm a classy man. I don't believe in trying to show myself out on Instagram or any social media sites and all these different things. Yes, I do believe in being handsome and attractive in the photos if I feel like putting it up, but to look for the validation on Instagram is not something you should do as a man. These men that's on Instagram and they're modeling, let them do that. Even if they are straight or a part of the LGBTQ community, at the end of the day, never look for the validation through social media. Look out for yourself. Always believe in yourself and always believe you are a man of wisdom, of power, and of statue by the way that you stand, the way that you walk, and the way that you present yourself. That's the only thing I can say to men so that they can get a bigger picture on what, how they should move. 
How about you guys? Yeah, I mean, my uh, my dad was a uh, a star athlete in high school, and um, he is a, a a much bigger dude than I am. He's got maybe five inches on me, and uh, and he's and he's built. And growing up, um, he definitely noticed that and would bring it to my attention as often as he could. Awesome. Um, and he'd always be like, "Are you? What are you do? Are you not eating? Are you not eating enough?" And he'd like just put food in my face and I'd be like, I eat everything. I'm better now. But I actually, when I was in uh, college, um, I was getting really bad acid reflux and I was having really bad digestive problems. It turned out I didn't like have a problem per se with acid reflux. I had a problem with overeating and I would overeat and I'd go to the gym and I'd gorge myself trying to get bigger. But, and I did, but I didn't get taller. And let me say something to that, because a lot of people believe just because you might live in a two-parent household or have the father inside the household, there is still not no dramatic trauma from how you live. And in fact, the matter that this man just said in this video that he could have had a traumatic, he didn't say it verbatim, but I believe taking the statement that he just made, that there was a dramatic effect of trying to get the validation from his dad in order to feel happier about himself. That's just my opinion. But parents can shove things down your throat. Parents can make you feel a type of way just because of the way that your body is fixated the way that you are. And that is a bad job on a parent's behold because a parent should accept the child and should be able to tell the child the right things to do in order to feel proud about themselves not to give a damn about anybody else but them goddamn selves. And, that, and we have an understanding that parents are your first teachers, the father and the mother. I think my freshman year of college, I was like 245. And I, at the end of my freshman year, like I got a talking to from my department about my weight. And they were like, you're like a pop singer and you're tenor and you're never gonna work. So I signed up for this clinic out here. I lost like 60 pounds in two and a half months wow. going to like this clinic. And I came back to college and they were like, well, now you're in between skinny and fat, so you need to decide what you're going to do. Damn, wow. It was this, like, crazy year, and it's very embarrassing as a man to say it, but I had, like, a full-on eating disorder. I got so skinny at one point, I came back to LAX for spring break, and my dad walked by me in the airport because I'd gotten so skinny that he didn't recognize me. And I was like, Dad, and he turns... And that's the pressure of a lot of these different things, especially if you know, men like him decide that he wants to get into the music industry. Because of course, they're going to make sure that you have a certain image. When you're getting big, they're gonna be like, they don't want you, they don't want, they don't want to see, <laughs> because they want the, the men to be as, uh, you know, marketed sexy just as much as possible. So I understand this man's pain and the fact of the matter that he had a full on this uh, eating disorder. And this is something that we don't talk about much when it comes to men that men also suffer from a lot of different things, especially when it comes to standards, when it comes to eating. You're too skinny, so you should eat more, or you're too fat, so you should lose weight. Now, again, like I have an understanding on this, and I'm not trying to be uh, hypocritical when I made this video. I do believe that men are more likely to take care of themselves when it comes to weight and make, making sure that they keep themselves in shape. They are, but at the same time, I do recognize there are certain traumas that happen, whether it be from parents or from a career that you embark on as a man. He's around and he looks at me, my dad's a doctor, and he looked at me and I'll never forget, he said, you look so good. I was, I've always been really skinny. You know, that's always kind of been something that was, I was like sensitive about a lot growing up. And you know, no matter what, uh, no matter how much exercise or anything, I just can't put on weight very easily. And so I would, Low metabolism. Always kind of, I find myself like tending to go towards and growing up these guys kind of like Iggy Pop and Keith Richards and you know, that style of, of man that I was just like, oh, those, those guys kind of gave me hope that like, you know, you don't have to be built to make a splash and to be a man and to be, you know, desirable, I guess, you know? What my body should look like and what your body should look like are completely different things. I, 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 I That's right. And I definitely do believe this man is right. Continue. I don't know that there is a perfect what 
a male body should look like because I've seen beautiful male and female bodies in all different shapes and sizes. I think the media. Exactly. And, 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 and I mean, as much as I disagree with a lot of these liberals and a lot of these people out there that talk about society's standard of what beauty is and stuff like that, I, I'm the type of person that doesn't give a shit what I look like. Either you like me or you don't. And if you don't like me, you can kiss my ass. That's, that's really the type of mindset that I have. Now I have an understanding that the way that I think is different from other men, that men might be more self-conscious about themselves. But the idea of this standard of beauty of what a man should be with a six pack and uh, oiled up and wearing Speedos or modeling the uh, newest underwear collection for these high brand cost uh, clothing companies. Like I said, man, at the end of the day, as a man, you should already feel comfortable inside your body. And if you don't, then work around peers that have the same problem or men like myself or other men out there that can encourage y'all to make y'all feel comfortable and at home with yourself. Because the inner working is more important than the outer working. The outer working, you're always gonna have critiques. People will critique me for the way that I look just like they'll critique you at the end of the day. But as long as you're comfortable with yourself and you did the inner work, that's the number one thing you should be focused on at the end of the day. And I wouldn't give a rat's ass if it's the most beautiful, attractive woman that calls you ugly, do you feel ugly? Do you feel like a piece of shit? That's the only thing that you should be concerned about. And if you do, what can you find yourself to feel less of a piece of shit? What can you make sure that you feel inside yourself to feel good? Not by anybody's standards, but your own. He has kind of fueled the, the emphasis of us looking a certain way. I think before it was about your swagger and your confidence. Now it's becoming more physical. The 300 yeah, movies. Yeah, I think it's amazing. That even when you watch something like the 300, you're like, all right, obviously these are guys who just live in the gym, blah, blah, blah. And that's all true. But even if you live in the gym, you're not going to look like that. Yeah, they're going to they're gonna spray in those abs to shadow it to make it look... Amazing. Like a comic book. Yeah. yeah, I mean, like the Old Spice commercial is a perfect example. She's like, look at your man. Now look at me. Now look back at your man. And I'm like, please don't. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the media. Oh, gosh. How does the media define our bodies? I think it sucks that the media defines our bodies because it doesn't give us a whole lot of room for us to be ourselves and be comfortable in who we are. These things that you have to have like a giant cock, you have to these heaving giant muscles. I think it, it, it makes those of us, I include myself in that, that are diminutive and skinny, small dudes, like it, 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 it picks us up and it. And, and I make certain videos because I wanted to get the attention of men that may define themselves as incels or may define themselves as men that can't get laid or men that don't feel comfortable in themselves to attract a woman. Because certain things that we do is to gravitate to get the attraction of women. It's a mating call. So my thing about it is sometimes I hear these, these dudes speak and they talk about you have to have a giant cock. That's bullshit. I'm, I'm not going to talk about... <laughs> personal situations or anything i'm just saying on a general scale they'll they'll say big cock but bitches bitches of bitches like dick bitches like dick all right that's that's the whole entire thing at the end of the day okay and <laughs> you're usually fine that's why i say when you when you hear these different things about and i know he is not specifically gearing this towards women but certain things are projections they're not really real they'll just say that because they want to put fear in someone so that they can make it seem like they're more dominant than they really are. It's taken me, and I still struggle with it to this day. I'm 30 years old, and I struggle with it every single day. So why, right, this whole body image thing, right, regardless of what community, what culture you're in, and why you want to look so good, you know, what's, what is that about? Once I lost a bunch of weight, and I'll tell you, when you go from a truck size body to a little guy body, people don't get out of your way. Mm -hmm. and, and, and it does affect you to the point that, you know, thank God I put it all back on. And <laughs> now people get out of your way. I think it all just goes back to like that caveman mentality of like the bigger, stronger, more prominent male is going to be the one to attract the most women. I think also going back to like wanting to, you know, be a presence in, in your loved one's life that makes them feel safe wherever you're going, you know, and in whatever situation that you would be able to handle the situation, take care of it in whatever way that it is, you know. So I think, you know, 
growing up as like a skinny guy, that was something that I had to figure out, like what other ways can I make somebody feel safe? We need to be willing to broaden the, the definition of what handsome and sexy means. In the beginning, when we were cavemen, it was very important that uh, you had a mate that could protect you and protect your children from other cavemen. It's loosely still the same mentality today. I don't know how to really word it. I don't know how to really fixate it, but it's loosely still the same mentality. Physical strength doesn't do that anymore. The future is dead unless we can figure out a way to live together on this planet. And that means negotiation, listening. That means diplomacy. I, I, I hate to break this man's bubble, but that's not realistic. That's not logical. Okay, we don't live in a utopian society where people believe in negotiating and having conversations and trying to get along. All that is just smokescreen because people are still gonna try to come out with their agendas and what they believe is right. And if you don't believe in it, they'll come at your throat. And I might've been like that in the past, but my whole theory about it is at the end of the day, the individual mindset is what matters. Then you work with a tribe, then you find your collective people who think just like you or have similar ideals and stuff like that and you work with them and you establish a tribe. That's what I believe in. So, I mean, I get what he's saying. It, it sounds great <laughs> in the imaginative world and the dimension, but understanding how life is really moving at this point in the last days, mm -mm, I can't really picture it. That's where real strength comes from now. Shout out to Soul Pancake. And my last thoughts is this, people, more specifically, gentlemen. I think the first working of yourself should always be the most important thing. The individual mindset is the most important thing. The way that you think about yourself is the most important thing. Now, I can't deny there are attractive people. There are ugly people. There are people who are fat. There are people who are skinny. There are people who's in the middle. There's people who are dark skin. There's people who's light skin. There's people who's brown skin. There's people who's all different shades of the rainbow. There's people out there that are tall. There's people out there that are short. I don't know what medium height is, but you know, with men, it's just tall and short. Okay. So the thing about it is you got to find where you sit on a brink of things. Again, to people who don't understand, this will never be a utopian society regardless if you like it or not. That's just how the most high made it. And the thing about it is the only thing that I could rectify to men is feel comfortable in your circle. Now to the videos that I played in this feature, in this premiere, I'm only given the thought that I feel as if when they're having conversations about men, this should be in private. This should only be a conversation for men and only men. There shouldn't be any integration of any ideologies that come from feminism and LGBTQ community mentioned in this conversation when talking about maleness. I don't believe in that. That's just my opinion. So otherwise in that, make sure you like and subscribe and stay tuned for more of my videos. Peace.